really doing that, there's still some contribution of your own. But if you are just sitting back and watching people in your social network, what they're doing, it is almost just like being a witness to other people's joy or happiness. Because the other part of the story that we haven't really said explicitly in this conversation is nobody posts bad things on social media. Right? Like, uh, who is posting pictures of them? I am am in a depression. Not (laughs) right. Not like, oh, I'm so glad I'm feeling better now. But like, look at me in my bed in the dark. I am depressed now. I don't even know what filter will help you with the dark shot. (laughs) None. But no. To to that point now, it's interesting you said that because that's that was I was just about to ask a question. So th- I do know people who post too much of their personal business, like went on a oh, date, when they had a fight with such horrible. and such. Right. Oh, okay. yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So it's the, OK. Yeah. So now we're in the same place. It's about where they use social media is basically like a life journal. They like Doogie Howser. Right. Over the on journaling Facebook. on Facebook. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. And mm-hmm. so your whole or you're putting up this Instagram photo of this quote <laughs> of the sun will come out tomorrow. You know, you're doing your Annie <laughs> and <laughs> you do this long, like three, four paragraph. <laughs> I mean, it is not taken away from their pain because the pain is real, but it always leads me to if you and I got into a fight, I wouldn't go to your show page, you know, screenshot an episode of Doopy Deep and then post it on my Facebook. It's so sad when you help people out in the <laughs> podcast world I'm not to laugh. and they move on to Sirius <laughs> XM and leave you sad on Spreaker. Like, that's, <laughs> but I do have, I do have the beginning of that paragraph. You do. You're ready that for happens. It. You got <laughs> the draft safe. <laughs> no, but seriously, like that's, that's not even how my mind thinks. So, yeah. I what's, have to get some thought about that. that. My about? gut reaction, my gut reaction is is for me is that that is not to diminish anyone's real pain or to invalidate that. I also think that that sort of behavior is functional and that it's trying to draw out a, a, a explicit reaction. For so for me, the function is the same. It's just using a different tool. So instead of posting me um, in my gym selfie. I'm going to post this other thing. But the goal is to get likes because you want the attention. It is a different tactic. Of, but are of you trying to get the attention of the person it. you're talking to? Or are you trying to get social media? Are you trying to get empathy or sympathy? Like what is what are some of the motivating factors behind that? Because I guess it's all coming from the same source, right? You're trying to get attention. But what what's your end game? You know, with me, it's all about the intention and the end game. So what are what are we talking about? Why do you think, um, and I don't know if you were, if you're breaking up on the recording or not, but there, I, I got, I, what I heard you say was, what's the end game with, even if you're doing that, like when you're trying to get attention, but what's the end game? Is yes, that the question? What's the, end game? the attention. Why do you think the attention is not the end game? Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because in this context, isn't attention synonymous with validation? I guess it would be in this context. Yeah, in not, this, not in everything, but in this particular in context. This context. Yes, yes. And so I think for a lot of people, that is the end game. But I think I guess what I meant to say, and I was saying nobody uh, her, her hyperbolically. What I'm saying is I don't think that people who are in a genuine state of depression. Um, and I see lots of people who will like there's memes um, like uh, animated or cartoon um, kind of style drawing memes about um being depressed and anxious means right so th- like this sarcastic kind of jokey thing around mental health issues or even around being depressed like I've seen it increase in those I still don't think that people when they are in the midst of a depressive episode when they're in the midst of um, an anxiety reaction are taking the time to get on, on social media and tell the world about it I think that if they want support and help from friends and family that's genuine they're reaching out personally in those moments that's what I mean. I think there is a difference there. I'm not so sure about that. I mean, and I'm, I'm okay. sure, I'm sure that there's that there's a genuine degree of no. I'm going to say that differently. I'm sure that there's there are people who genuinely, when they reach out, 
on social media are looking for the attention and they're using it as a tool. They're looking for help, but they're not they're maybe they are going through something, but they're not necessarily feeling it in such a way that it affects them and doesn't allow them to reach out on social media, if that makes sense, right? But it seems to me as though there are people who genuinely use this tool in this way because they've been encultured to see it as one of those tools they can use this way. Does that make sense? Mm. Sort of like... I don't know if I followed you on that, Toma. Yeah, well, so, okay, think about this. So, the telephone. (laughs) If you're feeling depressed... And you're feeling suicidal. And I'm not saying that these people are suicidal. I don't want anyone to say, oh, well, he's equating right, right, right. depression, suicide. It's not that. I'm using it as an example. But if you're feeling depressed, you pick up the phone, you call the, um, what is it? The depression hotline or suicide hotline. You can do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're using the telephone as a tool. This is the same tool that you could use to call your mother, your aunt, your job, you know, whatever you need to do to order pizza. It's that same tool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So using that metaphorically, what the phone was for us in our generation growing up, I think Instagram and Facebook and all of that are used that way. So for example, you and I text But there are people in my life who are in the 20 something. They don't text. They'll hit me up on Instagram direct message. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's the way they communicate or they'll communicate through Snapchat. I have a friend who he'll only talk to me, send me a Snapchat. And that's how he communicates. That was different for me. And there, mm-hmm. was, he did send me a private chat one time in which he said, hey, just wanted you to know I broke up with my girlfriend, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, that's so strange to get that on Snapchat. Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't you mm-hmm. just pick up the phone and call it if you needed to talk to me? But then I'm like, but that is his phone. So he's using it the way he understands it to, to be used. I hope that makes yeah, more sense. Yeah, and I guess <clears throat> that does help me. I think the s- distinction I would still make, and even in each of those incidents, those were personal, like DMs, like one-to-one versus I'm putting this up on my wall and whoever responds, responds. Right, which I do have someone who does that too. But yes, mm-hmm. yes. I think that that's not that person who, who does that, who gives a chronicle of his day and his divorce and housing issues and all of that. I think that's more about where he is as opposed to where society is. And he's really right. in some, some deep pain. Like he really is. And I've tried mm-hmm. to reach out to him and give him referrals and so forth, but he seems to be more comfortable speaking about it in a social forum, but not really doing mm-hmm. anything about it personally. Mm-hmm. So I don't know really how to con- connect with him in a meaningful way to get him the assistance right. he needs. Yeah. And so the, the the answer to that is for anybody for whom that happens, I have the belief that you're not ready to have the real conversation. Okay. Makes sense. B- because the, those mechanisms, those mechanisms aren't set up to facilitate healing, moving through experience, anything like that. You're almost using them as moats, right? Mm-hmm. You're, so mm-hmm. You don't want people to really pass the waters and reach you. But it's like, here, I'm going to make this decree and I'll interact <laughs> with you if I choose to. But mm-hmm. if I don't like what you say, I can block you. <laughs> I don't need to hear. Right. You. If I don't, you know, want to hear any more, I can just close my Facebook you and know. not interact. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm a fan of the unfollow. We can stay friends, but I can. I don't have to see what you're saying. Be, be on notice, everyone who is connected with Doctor Nikki. They don't know because Facebook takes take Facebook takes the time out to let me know uh, that I don't when have to be you, worried about that. Right, they let when me you know unfollow. That. They won't know that you're unfollowing them. They'll just think you're still a friend. Yeah, no, I exactly. <laughs> don't even have so Facebook you've unfollowed. On my phone. You've unfollowed too. Is what that no, lets me no, know. No, 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 no. Stay out my deepy. Stay out my doopy deeps. <laughs> <laughs> I have not unfollowed. I have removed Facebook from my phone. Um, in part because 
I found 2015, 2016, one of the most vile, hideous, and divisive years I've ever seen in this world. And I just needed to keep my sense of hope in humanity. And so in favor of these interactions with people I don't know who were saying things that they didn't know than what they were talking about, I focused on cultivating personal and meaningful relationships with people of varying different opinions. And I grew mm-hmm. from that. So I had to mm-hmm. let that go. I let Twitter go for a yeah. while. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't. I talk to people all the time about this, and um, what keeps me balanced is um, is that the people, at least in the people that are in my world sphere, uh, recognize that there is a distinction between social media engagement and real life personal engagement, and also recognize that um, real dialogue, real growth, doesn't happen through Facebook. I mean, I think for some people, maybe there those those. Um, that happens, but I think around some of the more heavier, meatier, complex ideas, especially the things that are uh, centrally tied to our beliefs and values about how we see the world, which is so much of what our politics are. Like, you know, when you, I guess to say it differently, when you really live your politics um, or try to live your politics, debating or trading posts back and forth on social media isn't the way to move. Uh, forward in your thought around things. It isn't a way to dialogue. It is a, only a way to debate. Um, and at the same time, as a social media user, there are people online that I've developed genuine relationships with that I don't know, that, that, I, that I've met through different communities online. And so I'm not at all a, a disparager of social media. I am a person that believes that it is a tool. And I believe, by and large, um, with many other things, what we bring to it um, only gets exacerbated or highlighted or amplified. Right. Um, But not necessarily that uh, we can create a whole new thing in us by engaging in social media as a tool. But in that context of thinking about social media of a tool and thinking about hashtag life won't let me be great. The reality is you could be great if you adjust your usage. Is is that what we're talking about today? Is that what we're taking away from this? Yeah, well, I think, well, let me say this. So I, I don't think that social media is the primary focus. I think that's a big part of it. I think that's a contributor. But I do think, to go back to my big picture which and, and my, my um, sharing about my life and stress is that I I think um, there are things that you that we I and us um, need to think about what are the pieces that we really value and what's important do I need to be doing all of the things that I'm doing um, and and if, if if I do need to be doing all the things that I'm doing uh, how can I be self-compassionate how can I be realistic uh, how can I be? Uh, how can I create uh, relationships or networks in order to maximize uh, my resources to facilitate those things? I think that for me, that's more important. The, it's, um, it's yeah, funny you say that. I a few years ago started going through my life and taking personal inventory, and this is something we've spoken about privately. Um, as well, but I was doing things because I felt I needed to do them. And a lot of that centered around doing things for other people, (laughs) which Mm -hmm. I'm doing your work. Uh, You know, I'm walking through the airport, carrying all your luggage and you easy breezy looking at, you know, the Starbucks wondering if you're (laughs) going to get a latte. My hand's so full. Where's my latte at? Right. So Mm -hmm. I was doing a lot of that. And the interesting thing was I was defining it as me, as mine, as my struggle, my issues. So I'm Mm -hmm. walking around and I'm dealing with the fact and stressing out the fact that, oh, you don't have money to pay your rent. And that was as emotionally significant to me as me making sure my own rent stays paid. Until I really sat down and said, let's think about the things I don't need to be a part of. 
and I started systemically letting things go. 